Located around airports where there's a large volume of air traffic, Class B airspace, often compared to an upside-down wedding cake in shape, begins at the surface and extends upward to a designated altitude, typically 10,000 feet. Aircraft inside Class B are permitted to maintain 250 knots indicated airspeed, the speed limit for operations below 10,000 feet MSL. However, aircraft operating below the overhanging layers of Class B airspace are limited to 200 knots indicated airspeed. Class B is shown on World Aeronautical, Terminal Area, Sectional, and Low Altitude en route charts. Let's look at Cleveland as an example. Class B boundaries are shown with heavy blue lines. There are four layers in all. Let's begin in the middle and work our way out. The top of the airspace is 8,000 feet MSL and in the vicinity of Cleveland International, it extends to the surface. The next layer starts at 1,900 feet MSL. The next layer at 3,000 feet MSL. And the outside layer begins at 4,000 feet MSL. Flying within 30 nautical miles of the primary airport, you must have an operating transponder and altitude reporting capability if the aircraft was certified with an engine-driven electrical system and is not classified as a balloon or glider. Before operating in Class B, you must receive authorization from ATC, maintain two-way radio communications with ATC, and have an operating transponder with altitude reporting. Private pilots may operate at all airports within Class B. Student pilots cannot take off, land, or fly solo in that airspace unless they have received ground and flight instruction for the specific Class B airspace. The student's logbook must have been endorsed within the previous 90 days by the instructor who gave the flight instruction. Recreational pilots may fly in Class B airspace after receiving an endorsement for ATC communication. At the busier Class B areas, such as Chicago and Los Angeles, student pilots may not take off or land at the primary airport. There are a couple of other special cases in these rules. First, an aircraft without a transponder may operate in Class B if the request for the deviation is made to ATC at least one hour prior to the proposed operation. Authorization to deviate from the altitude reporting requirement may be given immediately. The minimum VFR visibility in Class B is three statute miles and you must stay clear of clouds. You'll typically see lots of airline traffic in Class B airspace, usually heaviest around pushes, as a carrier lands or departs many of its airplanes close together. This is a result of the hub and spoke system the airlines use, and it's best to avoid Class B areas altogether around push time. The airlines are also referred to as scheduled carriers, and from these schedules you can know when a push is going to happen, or the tower at the primary airport will usually be happy to tell a pilot when it's best not to show up.